Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a seat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The spice of the drink is dandy. You are listening to Phantasm Podcast. Hey, this is Trevor Sturdad. Hi, this is Brad from the Black Dahlia Murder. I'm Gabriel Warrior. Harry Green from Simple Tour. We're stolen from immolation. This is Anthony Michael. We are Gorgasm. This is from Crater. This is Ernie C. of Diet Count. Terror from Suffocation. Phantasm Podcast. Join your host, Corey Gorecrest, and Dr. Vincent West for exclusive interviews with the sickest bands in metal and more. Head over to cultofantasm.com. The only gravesite for all things horror and death metal. No filler, all killer. Now, please welcome our guest of honor. This is Steven, the Tornish Stab Wounds. You're listening to Phantasm Podcast. Fucking check it out, dude. Today. Workplace Phantasm Podcast. I am here today with Steven of 200 Stab Wounds. We're here to talk about piles of festering decomposition. It's out now on Maggot Stop. Dude, how you doing? Pretty good, man. How are you? Awesome. Uh, how you holding up in this all this bullshit going on? Uh, you know, just kind of trying to get through it the best way we can. You know, playing a lot of guitar, writing music. You know, just trying to take advantage of the time off. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, before we get into the the actual EP, we talk a little bit about uh, some horror. You're, you're you said you're an old school horror guy. Yeah, um, shit, dude. It's I was into that stuff like really, really heavily when I was like shit, like sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. So it's been a while, but I I know a couple I really liked. Uh, you know, when I was like collecting VHS and stuff, I like Chopping Mall. I like oh, yeah. uh, Evil Dead One, Two. I liked um, shit. Hold on. I, I actually have a collection. I'm about to go look at right now. I can name off fucking a fuck ton. <laughs> nice. Chopping Mall is like, a great uh, one. <laughs> I like. All, I know. I know it sounds cliche too, but I really like all the uh, the Halloweens. Oh, they're great. You know, they're great. Everyone, everyone likes that stuff, but you know, I don't, I don't really care. Yeah. I like the, the all the screams. Yeah. Uh, you, ever, you ever heard of the movie uh, Scared Stiff? Yeah. Yeah, dude, I fuck with that. I don't know, man, there's a lot. I could go on and on all day about it, but <laughs> now uh, if you could go back to any of those, have, have you watched any uh, any recently in quarantine, or what? What, what are some of you suggest? Um, I honestly haven't watched any of the old school shit really in a while. That's why I'm kind of like, <laughs> I wish I like revisited it for this interview or whatever. But uh, oh, it's fine. I don't know, man. I, there's a, another one that I really liked that I only really watched one time because I found it at this flea market on uh, tape or whatever but I really liked Prince of Darkness oh it's so good very underrated it's so good. And, and the cover I thought like I never even heard of it when I saw it Yeah. but I saw the cover and I was like fuck it dude I have to get this this looks yeah. sick <laughs> it's one of the best Carpenter movies Donald Pleasance is awesome and Alice Cooper's in it it's badass it's, it's, oh, yeah. it's an amazing movie and very underrated Carpenter film. That's honestly one of his best uh, visually and just overall horror. It's great. So yeah, dude. that's a total classic. Yeah, dude, a lot of my uh, a lot of my friends they think it's kind of weird that I'm into like the old school like cheesy horror shit. But honestly, I think that's that's in my opinion that's the best kind of horror. It's just like the old like that's yeah, the know. best. You know, we do on here usually we, we've done a couple from like 2000 just to like fuck around, but mostly we do 90s and backs. There's some really good like mid 90s horror that's still in that like 80s style cheese of it so um, you know like evil ed stuff like that but and and, like the prophecy movies but uh you know going back like the 80s was the era man like you know that was the campiness is so good because they just don't make movies like that anymore you know yeah i feel i feel like kind of i don't know it sounds kind of weird but i feel like the harder people try to make it 
almost like, I don't know, I just, I just don't like, uh, CGI too much. I don't like, yeah. I don't know, like, kind of the way they did it, like, back in the day, it, it seemed like, cause I don't really know, so I'm not gonna act like I know, but right. it kind of seemed like they, they did more, like, actual, like, makeup work, or, like, had, had like, yeah. a makeup artist in there to actually make that shit look, like, realistic. Yeah. And, you know, the CGI shit's cool, but, I don't know, that's kind of why I like the old school, like, like, cheesy horror shit, because it, it, it just looks, like, crappy. Well, it seems like they worked harder on it, but in reality, you know, it's cheaper now to do the CGI thing than hire, like, a whole crew of people to do the makeup stuff and uh, special right. effects. But also, back then, you were dealing with people that were trying to be innovative. They were trying to find new ways to make the practical effects effective to where they looked real and looked like, you know, like a uh, screwdriver's coming out of someone's chest or, you know, whatever. Like, they, they made it look as real as possible, and they were kind of all branching out at the time try to make it like hey you know we're gonna make it look really badass because at the time everybody was trying to one-up each other i guess it's like you had like the 70s stuff where it was getting right. gorier and gorier as it went on like with texas chainsaw massacre kind of changed that and um yeah dude i, I hated that movie for a long long time just because <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you why I, I i never really like gave it a chance like yeah i'm the type of person and it sounds kind of stupid but and it even goes with music i guess too yeah but if someone talks about something for, like, a long time or always tells me to check something out or, you know, whatever, I usually automatically hate it right off the bat. I don't know yeah. if that's just how my mind kind of works. <laughs> no, I get I that. I actually, like, got into all the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. like, yeah. you know, I've, I've obviously, obviously heard about it and seen them, whatever, but I never really gave it a real chance. But, dude, I love those movies. Yeah, they're sick. And the first one especially was so grueling to make and like, the Texas heat. Everyone hated making that movie. And you could tell, like, that the people were, like the mood of the movie is really grungy because it was actually made that way and it's kind of like a big old it's like a struggle like that they had to go through to make it and you can tell it's just very horrific in that sense and then Leatherface is just ridiculous but um you know you had that and you had the Italian horror guys that were making crazy ass movies and gory movies and you know like the Cannibal Holocaust too and stuff like that that were people thought was real like even when I saw it when I was younger I thought it was a real movie because you when I saw it, you still didn't really have the internet to where it is now, to where you can just look up whatever you want. Like, there was still that mystique to it that was like, I mean, was this, like, really a thing, or, you know, what was the deal? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, dude. <clears throat> my fucking, uh, my roommate actually has, um, this, like, really, really big horror collection. I mean, he collects everything. He he does, like, old-school VHS tapes and, like, laser disc and shit like that. But, dude, he has his room full, and I'm talking, like, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of old-school horror tapes. And nice. He has, like, this giant fucking Michael Myers, like, statue in here. Hell, yeah. It's, it's fucking sick, dude. He has, like, every movie you can think of that's, that's like, old-school horror. He has, like, yeah. a big-ass Dragon Ball Z collection. He, he has everything, <laughs> nice. mostly horror. Yeah. It's pretty sick. You got. I got the. And I got some. Find most of the new shit that I, you know, that I try to get into that I really haven't seen before because, yeah. you know, it's it's hard to like, really like know about everything or or find everything. But right, dude, he, has, he has everything. He goes on like tape hunts and shit, and he'll like go throughout the country and just hit flea markets and whatever you can find and just pick up whatever that looks cool, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. I try to do the same thing because I got I, I got a pretty good amount of tapes. Um, not a whole lot, but I've gotten some of the ones I really want and. I go to like horror conventions a lot too, doing this stuff. So I uh, try to pick up some at flea markets and like uh, thrift stores. You know, I find them a lot too. And you know, they're not just horror. If I can find, you know, I found like a uh, Road Warrior or like a uh, Smokey and the Bandit and shit like that. I'll still get some like classic like '80s shit. You know, right? Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. And like I said, I think now a lot of horror is more caught up in the jump scare thing versus actually just being good. You know. Yeah, I fucking hate jump scares. Yeah, I don't hate them all the time, but I just think it's like, like a lot of movies that use that shit, they either do it way too early in the movie, or they just kind of overdo it, or that's almost like the only, like, uh, it's almost like it's the only thing that happens throughout the whole movie, nothing really scary or, right. or you know, really horror, it's just you know, <clears throat> jump scares, and I think that shit's stupid. I think in the 80s, you know, at least for my taste, you know, the scares came from the, the special effects and the visuals and what they right. looked like and, you know, just putting you in a, a position where, you know, you feel claustrophobic or trapped somewhere, like, with the person, you know, whether it's a slasher or whatever, you know, even, like, ghost stories then, it was more 
horrific based on the effects versus just like ah oh there there's somebody walking past the room or you know whatever it's right, right, that's right. never been a thing that's like freaked me out but it freaks out it's more for like it's more like a tween thing I guess it freaks out younger people and yeah. I was watching The Exorcist when I was like five so I mean I kind of got a good taste just being home all the time and and uh, watching movies really late when I wasn't supposed to be so you know <laughs> those movies never really did I, much I think that's just cool when it's just like you know, once or twice, whatever, and it, it, it's like perfectly timed. Yeah, but that's why I'm not really into like current horror. Or anything. I'm sure there's like you know good stuff if I really like dug deep and, and actually watched it. But in in my opinion, just because like the first type of horror I got into was like that real old school shit, yeah, like slasher movies and all that. I feel like it just kind of ruined the current stuff for me because it's just not. It, it just doesn't live up to that, you know. Yeah, and and you know this stuff holds up, and I think the resurgence of it because now. All that stuff from like twenty years ago, thirty years ago, they're re-releasing it on Blu-ray and shit like that. So all this is coming back, so the newer generations can watch the old shit and not feel like, oh man, this is old. I got to watch it on VHS. It's like now they have pretty much everything re-released in a better restoration, so it's like you can actually watch them like it is current. And some of them look like they were just shot last year, you know. So um, it's pretty, it's pretty cool, and and you know. Another thing about that too is that it's just fun to collect, and it forms another hobby too, like to revisit and collect this kind of stuff. And right. uh, I've, you ever seen the? Oh, I'm taking it you are a fan because of the name of your podcast. But you ever seen the Phantasm movie? That's what it's named after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I, yeah. I assume so. Yeah. But uh, I've, it's I've my favorite seen, movie. I watched. I used to watch the first one like all the time. So good. And then I saw the second one, but mm-hmm. I didn't really get too deep into it. And then I, I think they made a third one too, but I, I don't know for sure. They have five total. Uh, the fifth one's like the newer one, and uh, right. you know, it's it's worth watching at least once just to say you've seen it. But I mean, it's not. I wouldn't recommend it as a movie by itself. Um, right. Two is honestly, even though they had the you know the Michael was a different character. You know, he, he was played right. by a different actor at the time, so people kind of hated that. But it was some... I forget what the thing was with that. It was a contract thing. But that movie is awesome. That's honestly my favorite one. And that's... Like, a lot of people skip over it because of the... You know, the, the actor was different, and he came right. back in the rest of the films, but, like, it's still great. It's a fantastic movie, and I don't even... I look past that completely, and it's great. Right. And then the first movie, they actually remastered that... Uh, J.J. Abrams is like the only thing I like that he did was remaster that movie and uh, right. it looks incredible and they have like the it's called Phantasm Remastered and you can find that um, yeah, pretty much anywhere seen, yeah, I'll probably check it out it's, it's sick it's like a 4K restoration it's not a 4K Blu-ray but it's a 4K restoration of it it looks incredible so that I'd highly right. recommend that but yeah that's my favorite horror movie of all time for sure and oh, yeah, uh, dude. it's good shit and I, I have to show a lot of people that movie because a lot of people have heard of it but never seen it. I'm like, oh, dude, I mean, if I'm going to recommend you any horror movie on this planet, like, not the obvious ones, of course, but Phantasm is, like, I mean, that's just, it's just good shit. Yeah. And it's scary. Uh, it is scary. Yeah, dude, for sure. You ever, I'm sure you've heard of Homewrecker, right? Yeah. The reason why I ever really, like, even knew about Phantasm, and I'm not sure if I'm wrong, I might be wrong, but I'm like, 99 percent sure that uh, they used a sample uh-huh. in one of their early early songs yeah. from Phantasm. Hell yeah! And I and because uh, like they're from the same city as we are, so yeah. I used to like, be hanging out with them all the time. So hell yeah! And I asked Barna one day, I'm like, "Yo, what's this sample?" He's like, "Oh, it's from Phantasm." And then that's how I pretty much got into that. <laughs> and then honestly, from there, because I already seen Evil Dead, like the original Evil Dead. Oh yeah! So I was already kind of like in that world, like had an idea. But, you know, once I got Phantasm, I just started going crazy from that. I getting tapes and stuff. I still have tapes I've never even seen. Do you, uh... I saw them and got them. Do you remember what the sample was? Um, I can't remember. If you... I, like I said, I could be wrong, but the sample I'm thinking of, it's, uh, you know the album Worms and Dirt? Uh... It's the early, early records. I don't think so. Um, the very first song off that, uh... Uh-huh. Off that record, I think has a sample from Phantasm in it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to check it out. It's, uh, it's the one uh, where the lady's talking and she's like, uh, the police don't have to carry guns like they do in the big city, and it's just like a speech. Mm-hmm. I, I can't remember the whole thing, but I'm pretty sure it's from Phantasm. Hell yeah. It's pretty I'm sick. I'll have to check it out. I know Municipal Waste actually has a song where they do a Phantasm 
quote in it. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, you know the song off the top of your head? It's uh, Guilty of Being Tight. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's probably my favorite line in Phantasm, too, where, you know, they're, they're sitting down and he's like, you know, Reggie's like, I see it, I see it all now. He's like, what we gotta do is snag that tall dude, you know, and we'll find out what's really going on. And he's like, He's like, yeah, we're gonna drive a stake right through his goddamn heart. And he's like, man, you gotta be shitting me. That mother's strong. And it's like, dun, 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 dun. I was like, hell yeah, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> give the fan, give the phantasm some love. So I love that. Um, okay, if I can recommend you anything, that you might have on tape. Uh, Hell Knight's a really good one. It's a classic. You said Hell Knight. Hell Knight. Oh yeah, and I have that on VHS. Sure I, I might have that, but yeah. most of my because I just moved out. Uh, into my into this new house I live in right now. Yeah, most of my tapes are still in my mom's house, so I still nice. have to go get those. But I only have like because I have so many vinyls and CDs and stuff. Yeah, that I kind of just left most of my VHS collection behind. Yeah, because you know I'm not gonna watch all that shit honestly. Like, right. I, I can bring it, but <laughs> dude, there's just so much. I just you know, but I'm pretty sure I have that though. I'm not I'm not 100 sure, but I should probably watch it. It's a good one. It's on Blu-ray. I have a VHS player that I got. It's actually one of those combos that has a DVD recorder on it, so I can actually burn discs if I wanted to, but, I mean, I wouldn't. But, um, most of them nowadays, they have a Blu-ray or DVD of them. You know, I'd recommend Blu-ray, but, uh, you know, they have all that all that shit now. That's why it's cool to, you know, have it, you know, so they got a better way to watch them now than just like, ah, I guess I gotta put this VHS on, but, you know, it's kind of cool, too, you know, to see what the VHS was like. <laughs> yeah, because it's been so long since I've fucking used a VHS player, but... Dude, I kind of stopped using that shit though because I bought this. I uh, can't remember who I got it off of, but I have this uh, Slayer VHS tape. It's from like the Divine Intervention era or whatever. It's, like, Was it Live Intrusion? Live. Yeah, Live Intrusion. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Dude, I put that in my VHS player and the fucking thing ripped the tape apart. Ah, uh, that's the only so thing I'm worried that, about. Luckily, yeah. luckily I saved it and I could like I like wound it back together or whatever. Yeah. But after that, dude, I I stopped putting any of my tapes in anything because it's just so fucking risky yeah no I definitely yeah that's that's the only reason I've never tried to put any of these in there if it was something I know I could find easily you know but some of these I was like I'm lucky to have found some of this shit I got in a like a you know a thrift store if that like if you come across something like Christine or Army of Darkness at a you know like a car right. like a car you're like okay I'm probably gonna hang on to that I'm not gonna try to watch it this <laughs> I have right. them on blu-ray why would I watch the VHS of it you know uh, right. Yeah, that's kind of like you said. If you know, if you can find it easily, because there's some tapes I go, you know, I'll go like multiple places, like you know, thrift stores or flea markets or whatever, maybe. Yeah. You know how you see the same tapes at oh, every yeah. fucking store. Yeah. So it's like one of those tapes. You know, I'm like fucking doing. I'll just fucking <laughs> see it works. If yeah. it's fucked up, I'll get another one. But for the most part, if it's something like that, you can't really find that easily. I'm not, I'm not even gonna touch it. You know, what I mean? yeah. I'm just gonna have it. Yeah, that's. Just go ahead and get it uh, another format, and then you can just watch it there. Or rip it off the internet, you know. Some people do that. Uh, there is a cool app if you have any streaming, uh, you know, like, I don't know if you have what, what if you have, like, game system, what you got, or what you use. Um, PS4. PS4? Well, there should be yeah. that and Roku and even cable. They have the app called Tubi. It's T-U-B-I. They got yeah. all that shit on there, cause, like, all the old school horror shit, because... And it has Chopping Mall and all that stuff on there. So if you ever want to revisit it, that's what me and the doctor have been doing to do uh, our full episodes with the reviews and stuff. So we've been right. using Tubi in quarantine because we both have it and we can still, over the phone, like watch the same movie and do an episode. Uh, so we've been using that, and they have so much good shit on there. So I'd highly recommend downloading it. It's free. You don't have to do anything. You just download it and you start watching stuff. <clears throat> And it's awesome, yeah. the kind of shit they got on there. Like uh, like I said, Chopping Mall's on there. They got, I think, Return of the Living Dead and like some of those. And um, Yeah, I'm pretty sure, because we have one of these Roku TVs in our living room, I'm pretty sure that my roommate has one of those. Uh, it's not, He has Tubi, but yeah. I think he also has this app that he downloaded. I don't know what it's called, but it just basically like has all of the old school like slasher horror films on it. Yeah, there's Shudder, too. I not really get to it yet, but... He showed me something about it one night, and I can't remember what movie we were watching. And, yeah, no, but it has a lot of stuff on there. Yeah, uh, Shudder's good. That's, like, all horror. Uh, but Tubi has a lot of it, so it's good. That's a good That's a good app to use if you want to just have an old-school horror night or, you know, whatever. But, <clears throat> right. dude, it sucks, too, because most of my friends, they think that all that old-school horror shit 
is like I don't know, and they, I don't know what they think, but they, they, I think they think it's like weird or something, just because it's like it, it, it's so old school and like yeah. To them, I feel like the, like the way they did the effects back then, and just like the way they did all the makeup and you know all that stuff, I feel like they just think it looks fake in their eyes. But in my mind, that shit's way better to me. So I, every time I watch a horror movie. Dude, I just watch that shit by myself. Yeah. <laughs> I do too, usually, you know, and if I try to get people to watch it, especially that aren't big into horror, they don't get it. Right. So they're like, kind of like, eh, you know. Especially the Italian stuff. Some of that stuff's even just kind of weird anyway, because the story's right. weird. They take a lot more time showing the effects, because it's like super gory and stuff. You know, usually a lot of the American stuff, they're not going to sit there and show you this knife piercing through someone's chest for like <laughs> 10 minutes. They're going to like cut in and out of it and. You know, right. but you know the a lot of the Italian stuff they focus on it like for a long time and it makes people uncomfortable. It's like that's the real horror right there is making people feel like they're watching something. It makes them uncomfortable. It's not so much you're gonna just be like ah, you know. It's it's like I'm watching something that feels so real. It's like making me almost sick. You know, like right, right, yeah. <laughs> and that they, they did a good job of it back then. And even something like Jaws, like I like movies like that where it makes you not want to do something because you watched a movie like it makes you not want to go to, into the water because there's like you, just, you know fear of sharks now or you know shit like Dude, that I'm telling you that's why I don't go in the ocean <laughs> or go to summer like, camp you know last time because I play in this other band when we were on tour we I think we were in like North Carolina or something I had to yeah. be I don't know one of those states like near the ocean or whatever and dude I went in the ocean and there was a fucking big ass jellyfish it was, yeah. I didn't even know it was a jellyfish because you know how like some of them are like clear like most of them are just clear and they look like yeah. fucking blobs yeah dude I fucking like was sitting right next to it mm -hmm. and someone was like hey get out of the water there's a jellyfish blah 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 whatever and dude ever since then I just don't go in the ocean I'll like dip my feet in there and shit but yeah I, yeah, I got stung I by one it made my <laughs> leg bleed and that was it wasn't that bad but I was like damn that fucking sucks now I gotta walk around with this fucking bloody like wet leg until I can get <laughs> something to wrap around it but luckily yeah. I didn't get stung, so... Yeah, it wasn't fun. It was a little jellyfish that stung me, but it it made me draw blood. It was crazy. I was like, God damn. But, uh, but yeah, the, I love the old school effects shit. I think it's so much cooler because it's... Um, I know the work that goes into it, but also some of like the greatest people in the business were really rolling in the 80s. Like even, you know, like Rick Baker and Rob Boutine, people that were doing, you know... Um, and Stan Winston, you know, all those all those three guys, and Tom Savini, who's like, you know, they still do stuff to this day, which is insane, you know. Um, right. They were the innovators. They were the ones doing all the crazy gore and trying to come up with new ways to, you know, make like a, a headshot kill look the most realistic it could possibly be and like have all these like dummies they can just blow to bits. And I mean, it was cool, you know. I, I appreciate the art of it more than just... Seeing like a CGI dude being cut in half, you know, it's not as fun. Right, yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. I, that, that's kind of the way I try to explain it to like some of the people that I've tried to show horror movies or even like girlfriends I've had, you know, I'll, I'll try and watch, you know, an old school like horror slasher film with them and they're just like, oh, this is fucking stupid. I'm like, dude, why don't you just appreciate the fucking art? <laughs> like, especially like you, you take a perfect example, they made like a newer version of Nightmare on Elm Street like some years ago. It's unwatchable, it's a terrible movie. Because they, it's so bad that they CGI'd his face because they didn't even put, like you know, like latex special effects shit for like a mask or like a overhead thing. They just CGI'd his face, and it's like they have so much more money now than they did to make these things. Like you know, back in the eighties, they didn't have the budgets they do now, but they were making the money back then. You know, but you know, but nowadays they can just lazily do it and and still make some money, but they're not as big as they used to be. You know, right. but again, I feel like you know. I feel like it just kind of I don't know. I feel like the stuff they make now kind of applies to you know just the way people's minds work now. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't agree know with what that. Feel the same, but I feel like not even just horror, but really everything mm -hmm. back in, like the nineties, eighties. Yeah, I feel like everything was way better back then. Like yeah. even when it comes down to like. Shirts they had in Walmart or like, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. do everything. And now I look at shit nowadays like horror films and just clothing and just yeah. fucking commercials. And I'm like, dude, this is fucking stupid. And then, like, I see like an old like commercial from like the 80s on like YouTube or something. And I'll, I'll yeah. be watching some stupid shit on YouTube. 
And I'm like, dude, even the fucking commercials were tight back then. Yeah. Like, what the hell happened? Well, you know, times change, things get, you know, influences change, people become different, and I think in the 80s and 90s, they were, you know, the times were changed at a perfect time to where everything was very innovative and everything was very just, you know, new and fresh, and, and now that people are kind of in nostalgia mode now, like younger people getting older in this generation and before, you know, they're kind of trying to go back to that, and it's slowly maybe getting there, like more movies are now going back to practical effects, and more people are really trying to, like, emulate things that they saw from the 80s and 90s, and they're bringing it to the forefront now, you know, which I think a lot of things are doing that, but as far as horror, you know, there's just... It's so hard now to make a horror movie because everything's been done, but you know, to to have a new idea and make it practical and uh, to have like an effective new horror movie in vain of something that was old because then you know nobody in the eighties or nineties were trying to do anything; they were just making movies. Now people are trying to do that because you know they want to do that. You know, the, the, the you know people in the eighties were doing stuff that had never been done before. They were getting away with making these. X-rated movies, dumbing them down to R-rated to pass them into theaters, and they were gory as fuck movies. You know, they can't really do that now as much. But now with all the streaming apps and stuff like that, more people are making movies that were practical effects. They're making more movies that are like pretty much unrated, and you can throw them up on Netflix or wherever. Um, but the streaming apps are so congested with so much shit that it's hard to like pick out something new on there and just be like oh I've heard about this you know and um, but there there's good stuff out there as far as movies and theaters it's usually not that great um, like the conjuring movies those movies are awesome it's probably the best movies they've put out in a long time like horror related and again they're ghost movies but they're they're really good you know they're good stories to them and uh, they are kind of scary and you know they use practical effects and some of the stuff. So. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really too picky when it comes to like, you know, because if you watch a movie and it, and like one's like super fucking gory and yeah, and you know all the slasher or whatever and right. has all the crazy effects and shit, and then you watch another movie and it's not really as gory, and, but it's just like a good storyline or yeah, you know, just a good story in general. Yeah, I, I'm not really too picky when it comes to that shit. As long as it's a good movie, I'm cool with it. As long as it is like it's not corny or like yeah, I don't feel like it was overdid or if I if I feel like. Like the people who made it, and this even goes with music too and music videos. You know, if you can tell the people were being original and like, you know, I feel like you can kind of just feel it. You know, yeah. like when I'm watching like a music video, like now, I kind of compare it because, like I said, I'm, I'm a fucking I, I, I judge everything. You know, what I mean? yeah. So if I like watch a music video now, I'll always compare it to like a Morbid Angel video from the fucking 90s or something yeah. you know what I mean I'm like this, this isn't the same but you know there's some videos and some movies I see where it's like you know I kind of see where they're coming from and you know yeah. they, at least they weren't trying to just rip off what people have already done or yeah. and, and there's ways in my opinion that you can like like uh, like redo what's already been done but in a different way to where it, it feels genuine yeah but I, I don't know there, there's just some things I see where you know it, it just feels try hard you know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of it is. And that's why, you know, I can appreciate newer visions for stuff. Or I can definitely see where a lot of movies are inspired by other movies that I like, too. But it's nice when people actually just make a movie. And if it's good or not, it's good. If it's not, it's not. But if they actually make right. something new where I'm just like, this is an entirely new movie. It's something different. It's not trying to be anything else. It's not even really drawing from anything else. But you can you can see the influences in it. So that's fine. But... It's it's hard to find a movie like that these days where it's just completely a new thing where they're not trying to add in all these little things from other movies, you know. Right. But yeah, uh, that is horror for us today, and I appreciate that. I'm horror every day, but uh, yeah, try to get Tubi, watch Chopping Mall again. Highly recommend that. Yeah, dude, I haven't seen Chopping Mall in forever, but I remember that was one of the first <laughs> movies I ever got into that was, like, old-school horror slasher. That shit was sick. <laughs> That's my fucking, the, the guy I actually room with now, he actually showed me that movie, like, forever ago. Yeah. And I ended up really fucking liking it. It's perfect, campy, just bloody, just good 80s fun. It's a good time. I like to watch oh, it yeah. around Black Friday, because it's a mall movie, so. Got robots killing people, you can't go wrong with that. Um, we will get into... 
Piles of Festering Decomposition, your newest EP. Uh, seems to be doing well. You guys already sold out of everything fast. You're going to have a new pressing of some of this shit, right, and the merch coming out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the the second press is actually going up tomorrow, as, as well as some new merch we're doing. Nice. Yeah, dude, it's, I don't know. It's crazy because, you know, I started this band kind of like because like i mentioned before i play in another band it's like a thrash death mix whatever you want to call it yeah and um dude that thing got so fucking stressful because people just kept quitting and <laughs> yeah i'd always have to find new members and yeah you know whatever whatever so i just started this band kind of as like okay i already play in one metal band but i still want to play metal but i need to do something that's going to sound different and not be what we already play because I, I i don't know i don't see a point doing that having two bands sound exactly the same yeah so i kind of just like started it for fun you know yeah playing really heavy shit you know i'm just like kind of with the mindset okay i'm gonna make something that is way heavier way slower just completely different from what i already play and then you know we did the demo and you know magaston hit us up and damn, i was like damn dude like i don't know it kind of it kind of makes me feel like I wish and I know like I like the EP I'm happy with how it came out but if I would have known that it was gonna do what it's doing now like before we even played a show right it, it makes me feel like I kind of wish we would have done some stuff a little different yeah or maybe recorded a little better maybe just took it a little more seriously because like I said it was just supposed to be like a side project for fun yeah so it's all just pretty bizarre to me how it all worked out you know what I mean so the like, Magastom like, how did they get picked up by a label yeah well how did they hear it um as far as I know um I posted this little like snippet Instagram video and it, you know how you can like connect Instagram to Facebook or whatever from certain accounts and yeah. post straight from Instagram yeah so we made a little Instagram account and it was connected to my Facebook so it was posted on Instagram and Facebook and Devin the singer of uh, Sanguasugabog yeah he uh, reposted it I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. and and before that he uh, he like heard the snippet and he messaged me he's like hey man you know this sounds sick like let me let me hear the full demo I'm like alright cool so then like he shared the post that I made on Facebook and he had sent me a message and he's like yo do you care if I show this to Scott from Magasomp because I, I guess Scott had messaged him and was like yo what's up with 200 stab wounds yeah so I told him I was like yeah dude fucking send that shit his way cause like I said right when I first started this band that was like the first label I had on yeah and obviously there were some other labels like Profound Lore 20 Bucks Spin yeah all great labels too yeah great labels great labels but Magastomp in my mind was like yeah. dude they, I don't know they just have so many good fucking bands that I'm already a fan of before we were even on the label yeah so that, I was telling the dudes I'm like dude this is definitely the first label I had in mind and it oh, obviously yeah. was the right decision because you know he was the first person to hit us up there was another label from um, Italy that had hit us up wanted to do cassettes nice I think they're called uh, what the fuck are they called I don't, I don't remember what they're called but he had hit us up and he was trying to do like tapes or whatever and um we were gonna do something through him but then Scott ended, ended up uh trying to work with us like you know before we ended up working anything out so yeah yeah dude it's pretty crazy yeah he seems like a good dude I know Devin when he started saying with Sugabog you know that was a side project for him too and then kind of just right. took off so maybe that's the new thing these side projects are what's hitting <laughs> right. uh, and at and least dude it's crazy too cause you know I've known Devin for quite a few years now. Yeah. Like, our bands, because my other band uh, is called Subtype Zero. Yeah. And he plays in Lynch Splitter, and we would always be playing the same shows in Cleveland. Yeah. So that's how I know him. And, you know, Lynch Splitter, like, obviously they have fans and stuff, but, you know, just, just like my other band, like, we have fans, you know, we play shows, whatever, whatever, but it never went, like, crazy, crazy. Right. So when Sting with Superbog started going crazy, I'm just like, damn, dude, like, and I don't know if this applies to like wherever you're from, mm -hmm. but in Cleveland, at least from my experience, I could be wrong, or I guess it's subjective, but yeah. from my observation, it always feels like, and I guess not even just Cleveland, but I guess coming from where I come from, which is like the hardcore scene, Yeah, it kind of feels like all the bands that get really, really big like that, or like really hype, is mm -hmm. usually 
they usually have members that are already in bigger bands or people that are kind of like hype in the scene you know what I mean yeah so like you know the, and the, like I said the big thing in Cleveland was hardcore so you know when Sanger Fugabog blew up I was kind of like surprised because it's like damn dude I've never seen just like a band that came out first off shit a couple months ago yeah and on top of that yeah. they have 11 minutes of music <laughs> I've never seen that before you know what I mean so I was really surprised yeah I think people are just especially in the underground scene they're just hungry for new shit and, and just more like death metal because it's straight away for a long time I think you know because I've been listening to death metal for a really long time and you know um, you know my, and my co-host you know he lived the era you know when death was big and when you know Morbid Angel is on like top of the charts and like all that kind of crazy shit. So he got to see that era of death metal, like the original era of it when he was young. And, and right. you know, while well, I'm at that age now, you know, it's cool to kind of see that. I think it's happening at my age now where death metal is now getting like really big, like in the underground where bands are just coming out of nowhere and they're just like, they're big now. Like, like you know, um, Bands like Blood Incantation and shit like that, like they just exploded, and like they're they're on the cover of magazines, you know, like uh, and there would never be bands like that on the cover of magazines. Not like death metal, you know. It's it's always like the more, you know, just straight up metal bands. But I mean, to have that kind of impact and Sango Sugabog, like I'll see kids around here that have patches of theirs, and I'm just like, I can't believe this like kid knows who that band is, you know, because I never I never used to see that shit, and you know, like people run around with like death metal stuff on and not to say it's trendy or anything i mean some people take right. it that way but it's actually in a place where it's becoming decent again like popular to where it, then it's good bands is the reason because there's a resurgence of like the old school thing but none of these bands like you guys or them are trying they're literally just having a good time they're making death metal and it sounds fucking awesome and people are really liking it so it's like blowing up instantly because people right. kind of it was so try hard for a long time with a lot of bands where they weren't having fun they were just trying to make like the heaviest shit possible which is fine but i think because bands like you know 200 stab wounds or sang so bug bands like that are really just they make a side project they're having a fun doing something just heavy and like straight up raw death metal and then it just hits because people that's what they want to hear you know <laughs> it's kind of and i feel like uh, and i feel like kind of when people do that, when people just like think something's cool, which which is fine to feel that way, right? And they want to do something because they feel like it's cool, which is also fine. But I feel like, to, to, uh, let me think of how to put this. I feel like to really have a good response to what you put out, yeah. I I feel like it really needs to be genuine. Yeah, I mean, like like it goes back to what I said with the horror films. You know, exactly. it needs to be genuine. And I feel like I feel like when you listen to a band. You can really tell that that's what they love. They, they they didn't just make a death metal band because oh oh death metal's cool now let's do it. You know people yeah. really like death metal bands. The death metal bands are blowing up and getting on good labels. And plenty so of people do that. that. You know, plenty yeah, of people. A lot, yeah, a lot of people do that. Especially you know from where I'm from, and, and you know I don't I can't really name any in particular, but just you know touring so much and just yeah. playing so many shows, I've seen it happen. Yeah. And those bands never get as of a response as like bands that really do it for the genuine aspect of it like okay i love death metal right i love all these bands so let me just you know that's what i'm gonna make yeah and you know every time i've ever done that in a, in a band it, it's always went well but 200 setup wounds for me that this is like the biggest response i don't know it's like the quickest band that's ever taken off in a sense yeah. i guess you know, yeah. we haven't even played a show yet. That's what's so crazy about the whole thing, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's never happened, dude, because, you know, all the other bands I've ever played in, yeah. and I've played in a lot of bands, like, dude, we've had, like, work our fucking asses off to even get one CD sold, or two CDs sold, or a t-shirt sold, or whatever. Yeah. Or that we don't even sell shit, and, you know, and, or there's no one at the show, or whatever, so, I just think it's fucking, it, it's just pretty insane the way this is all working out, and, you know, like you said, like the state of death metal now, or just metal in general. Yeah, and I know you know I give Scott and Maggot Stomp all the credit in the world because just the presentation of it. And he has a really good ear for like the style of death metal he wants to promote, and um, yeah. I don't know. I, th I think he just does a really good job of promoting it and finding bands that he really likes to to 
try to get out there and and the whole merchandise thing you know he always does a really good job of uh putting all that out there and and doing like the tapes and stuff like that i think that's really neat so you know yeah. uh, labels like him and 20 bucks spin profound lore they all have a really good uh good head as far as who runs it and uh are really passionate about just putting out good music so you know that definitely right. helps yeah dude and that's like i said that's why i just you know well before he even hit us up that's why i was already so on trying to get on magazine or been just sending them a de- like a demo or whatever just because you know his whole like roster is just fucking insane dude disembowel malignant altar sanctus superbog fucking uh inoculation yeah they're awesome too yeah dude all, all you know all those fucking bands are just so sick and yeah you know that it, it, it was crazy when he when he hit us up too you know i, I was almost in like disbelief because i know it's not like you know, whenever I tell people this, it sounds wild because it's not like a huge major label or whatever. But dude, right. in my opinion, Magasomp is like I don't know, dude. They're, they're, it's like a staple in the underground at this point. Yeah, they have they're a huge metal. following, and they have a lot of people waiting on the next release. People instantly go on that site when they stock it with merch and buy it all out. Like you know, people are really, really pay attention to it, and they're into it. And today, I don't know if you heard this, but. Uh, Frozen Soul got signed to Century Media, which is insane. Yeah, yeah they just have, that's fucking awesome. It's crazy, you know. And I, I, know. I, I just like really heard of them and was getting into them, and uh, they're already on a you know pretty major label, you know. <laughs> so that's yeah, pretty. Dude, and, that, and the most crazy part about it is, is that like like I said, dude, like bands, you know, in my experience, have always had to, you know, work their fucking asses off. To Be even touring get, band for years and have all this experience. Yeah, to and, even get on a on a notable underground. So for yeah. someone for a band to put out a four song demo, one of those songs being covered, yeah, to get on a major label and only do well, I'm, I'm not really sure how many tours they did, but you know, I know they haven't toured that that much because they've only been around what like a year or so. Yeah. <laughs> so shit, dude, for that to happen, that's that just goes to show like where all this is headed and like just the good state that it's all in right now. Yeah, and you know, you guys are doing great already. Haven't even played a show, so I can only imagine. I know. <laughs> I think that's what kind of sucks about this whole thing, though, dude. Like, <laughs> I, I I don't know. I just want to play a show. I just want to see what the reaction is going to be when we play live. You know, whether it be in Cleveland, whether it be in California, whether it be in yeah. Utah or wherever. You know, I just I just want to fucking play, dude. Yeah, and I saw Sango Suga Box. You know, I went and interviewed them, and you know, right on the week of this all happening, like this was right at the end of I don't know, maybe it was like the beginning of March. I don't remember. It was right when they were starting to shut shit down and. This was like the last thing I was ever going to do for a while, like be out of town and do something. Right. And uh, there was only like 20 people at the venue, and it was, you know, they ended up finishing the tour, but I mean, it was, it was awesome, but it it's going to be even stronger, like, when everybody gets to play, like, after all this, this shows are, turnouts are going to be nuts, and like, you know, people are kind of saying that a lot of people are still going to be weird about going out and stuff like that, but... You know the metal kids. As soon as the show's like we got a show, they're gonna fucking be there, and they're yeah, gonna pack exactly. the place out. And especially you know for you guys and bands like that, that people are really wanting to see that they just started checking out and buying all their shit. You know it's gonna happen, so it'll be a good time. You know, but I, I feel for you. You know, you got all this hype now behind you, so now to go out there yeah, and actually, yeah, you actually go out and do it. It's gonna be nuts when it does happen. So I think it'll pay off. You know, yeah, it, it'll be worth it in the end, but. Dude, it's just, it's just like fuck, dude. Like all the other bands I've ever played in, it, this is almost like like a wet dream to us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, selling, out, selling out on fucking cassettes, like dude. <laughs> like we've had cassettes made before for like some of my past bands, and dude, I still have boxes from bands I was in when I was sixteen. Yeah. Boxes of cassettes that we never sold because you know, first off, the, the the first stigma with tapes is like, oh, no one has a tape player, like blah blah blah. Like no one wants to buy cassettes. It's all digital. Like yeah. blah blah blah. So like for us to sell out on cassettes. It's like, dude, what the fuck? It's, 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 just, it's just like almost unbelievable to me. But you know, like you said, dude, people just buy out everything Maggot Stomp has, and yeah. it's almost like just like the reputation he has. People are just like, yeah, I know. like even before hearing the music, I feel like they know it's going to be sick just because of the label, you know. Well, I think people, especially younger people now, because death metal for a long time, I don't think I think it kind of lost its culture to what it had because the times change. You know, you. You, the digital thing is the thing now, and a lot, a lot of people just don't 
you know, the downloading and shit, and people weren't really collecting physical media anymore. And then I think right. vinyl was a big resurgence, you know, because that took back off. People started buying vinyl again, and then now yeah. cassettes are coming back, and 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 I think people just want to be a part of that culture because they never had it before. Like, like when you were, you know, when a lot of these kids growing up, like me, like you know, I was listening to death metal and shit like that. But then they had all this new metal stuff. It was just CDs. I mean, people weren't collecting long sleeves or doing anything like that you know and, and right. being a part of a culture it was just here's a cd i'm gonna buy the cd and plus the new metal culture fucking sucked it was like you know flat bill hats and and you know it was just kind of lame you know <laughs> there was nothing good about yeah. it and and they were so all over the place you know you got like corn and like the goth kids liked and then you got limp biscuit and all the jock kids like and then you got slipknot who like all the weird kids and the goth kids like sometimes and then there's just so much coming out at a time but i think now that all that's kind of just all those bands are like old now and people still are kind of nostalgic about it but now the death metal is kicked back up and it's like hey vinyl you know we got vinyls of this and cassettes of that like i feel like that was a culture people that like that music just were robbed of because of all the other shit going on and yeah. they kind of, you know, the promoters and labels kind of got away from the vinyl and the cassettes and the long sleeves. But all these newer promoters, like, you know, the, all the all these people they're putting out, and, and the bands, too, that have the insight to be like, hey, we want this on cassette, or hey, we want a really cool, like, old school long sleeve of this. That culture is just coming back for the younger people that didn't have it, and... I think that's a big part of it, and it's really it's really neat because I love collecting cassettes. You know, I've been doing that for a long time, and VHS. Like, I just love having that shit. You know, I'm like 20 years older in my head than I should be, but uh, you know, I I collect tapes because I've I love I got most of the Iron Maidens and like Judas Priest on cassette and like Kiss and fucking Wasp and and shit like that. But um, a lot of the newer death metal stuff I try to get on cassette because it's it's fun, you know, and uh, I usually buy the album digital or sometimes I'll get the vinyl but usually I like to have the cassette of them um, just yeah. so I have them because I'll buy I like buying the shirts more than anything um, right, right. but having the cassettes is just fucking awesome you know I, I like having the collection of those yeah dude that's always been my thing too like I mean digital is cool because I mean I guess the most important thing is the music but yeah. to me personally I like I don't know I like having the insert and the lyrics and the pictures and, yeah. and, and, and the drawings and the artwork and all that shit like that and, you know, and, and even when you, when you think about it, you know, all that you're getting inside of a vinyl or a cassette, or I guess even a CD, depending on the layout of it. Yeah. Dude, you're not, it's not that much money for what you're getting, you know what I mean? You get, yeah. okay, you spend, what, $5 on a digital thing where yeah. you're not going to get the artwork, you're not going to get the, the booklet, you're not going to get the CD, like the exactly. actual, like, tape or CD or vinyl with the picture on it or the sticker on it or whatever, whatever. Yeah. I don't know, that's always been, like, kind of my favorite part about, you know, not even just metal, just music in general is oh, yeah. getting the physical copy and you know what? having that little package right there and there. You know, it's important for metal to have the artwork and the lyrics because that's the whole point of it. Like when I used to go look for CDs, when you know, if I wasn't reading like the magazines, I would go out to the stores and just flip through stuff and I'd be like, oh, that looks fucking awesome. Like I'm gonna buy that. You know, it's all about the presentation. Right. Like who doesn't when they see Eden Back to Life or Butchered at Birth, you're not gonna be like. Nah, I'm not gonna buy that. You're gonna be like, oh, what the fuck's that thing? Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm definitely yeah, checking even that. People shit out. that aren't in the metal, they're gonna see that and be like, what the fuck? It's gonna catch everyone. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna remember it whether they want to or not. Um, but I, I'm a physical media guy myself, but I don't have anywhere to put CDs at the moment, so I, right. I try not to just stack them everywhere. Um, but I do like to have physical something, like whether it's a cassette. You know, cassettes for me right now are a little more manageable for where I can put them, <laughs> but. Uh, right, right. You know, in vinyls, I have a little spot for those, but I, I, I try not to buy those too often. But sometimes, got some really nice ones that hit, and I'm just like, all right, I gotta buy it. And I like looking through the the vinyls are really nice, especially when you got the gate folds or just just pulling out the record, and and they sound fucking good too. You know. Yeah, I think personally, I think that the vinyls always sound the best. They do. Yeah, cassettes are cool too. I I like cassettes because it's like not always the highest quality, but I just think it sounds fucking badass just like the way yeah I guess I guess vintage would be the word you know yeah and that's kind of what a lot of people are into now but like I said you know people that didn't have that I think they're really wanting it so they're like you know we want you know it's not really a demand but it's more of like a it's it's just something that's just kind of happened and people are really sold on it you know and I think it's right. a good it's a good thing you know but um 
Yeah, let's let's get into Piles of Festering Decomposition. Uh, we'll talk about the first track, which I love the name. It's Maggot Casket, which is fucking awesome. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the track. Yeah, dude. Um, I don't know, man. It's just, like I said, I just, I just got really frustrated with, you know, my first band just falling the fuck apart, basically. And, and we were actually supposed to do a tour back in um i think it was march or maybe a little bit earlier i can't really remember but everything right. got canceled yeah so and, and before that our one our guitar player had quit over some fucking stupid ass bullshit <laughs> and yeah. then we, we were trying to get our bass player to play guitar for us and it, and the shit just ripped so hard that like he, <laughs> he was like no i don't really know if i can play it and even if i could play it it's gonna be half ass yeah. yada yada just a whole <laughs> bunch of problems yeah so i said fuck it dude i'm just gonna I'm just gonna write this other shit. Yeah. I'm gonna start this other band as, as like a as, uh, like a side thing, fun thing, whatever. Yeah. And that was the first track that I wrote before we even had any members. Like I, I have a MacBook, so I usually just demo shit out on there. Like I'll write songs and send it to the band members or whatever. Yeah. So I demoed that song out on my computer, and um, I had sent it to uh some of the dudes that play in the band now. I sent it. Lance, which yeah. he plays the guitar, but he also plays in my other band. Yeah. So I sent it to him because he was he he was talking about starting a band called Two Hundred Savage for a while. Yeah. But it was supposed to be like a like a almost. I don't really know what he was trying to go for. I think he was trying to go for like like really heavy like hardcore beatdown type thing. Yeah. So, but I always thought the name was really cool. So I had sent him that track, and I was like, "Yo, you know." starting this other thing I know you mentioned like trying to play in something a little bit heavier and you know I know you wanted to do vocals but you know for these songs in particular I'm trying to have like the grotesque yeah. you know vocal, <laughs> disgusting vocals <laughs> and I know he can't do that so I was like well you know I'm not you know if you want to play in the band let me know dude and you know I think that name you have is fucking sick so and, you know he, he was all about it and we got we got the drummer from our other band to play in this band Owen so yeah. it, this band 200 Stabboards is kind of like it, it's like inbred with my other band yeah like me Lance and Owen we all play in the other band nice and Ezra the bass player he, he didn't play in any other bands but I've known him for like a long ass time like, I've known Ezra since I was like dude I met him in kindergarten and we've been playing music yeah. together ever since and, like Amazing. little fuck around bands whatever <laughs> so I hit him up and he was down and you know they all love the track and and I didn't even really write lyrics. It didn't have lyrics on it at the time when I sent the demo, but, you know, they all thought it was pretty fucking sick and really heavy, so that's kind of how the band came together, and that's how that track came together, you know, just kind of fucking around, demo, or whatever. Yeah. And we obviously kind of, you know, uh, arranged it a little bit different after we had all got together and before we actually recorded it. Yeah. But, yeah, dude, uh, just, that was like the first track, and that's kind of what all the other songs are kind of based off of just kind of riffing and, and sending stuff over yeah it's kind of you know li- like little layout of an idea of a song you know and then uh, the last thing I always do is vocals because yeah. we started writing more shit now for like a, we're gonna do a full length yeah so that's kind of still like the same uh, you know formula we use now we just you know I'll write something and send it to the dudes and if they have a riff they'll you know send it back and I'll try to like put it in anywhere we can or like we'll get together and you know form it together like you know rework the song or whatever but yeah dude that's basically kind of how it happens just you know I'll demo something out send it to them and if they like it we'll use it yeah <laughs> now you've been uh, writing some some newer stuff or just kind of yeah yeah um so, cause I don't even think that that uh I don't even think that Scott expected this shit to go as well as it did you know yeah so you know, I asked him, you know, like, what What do you think we should do next? Because, you know, I, I, because I always, I don't ever like giving a label, like, that much power at, yeah. to, like, telling us what we should do, especially a label we haven't signed a contract with. Right. Just because of my experience with labels has always been shitty. Yeah. But, you know, dude, Scott's a fucking great dude. And, you know, as soon as we started working with him, shit started to go really well. And, and he was always super nice. And, had like a lot of confidence in what we were doing and you know so I, I just hit him up and I was like hey man like 
you know, what do you think we should do, you know, as far as the next release? Like, because obviously he knows his fan base a little better than I do. Yeah. Because, you know, we're all new to this shit. So, and he, he suggested LP. So, yeah. yeah, dude, we're trying to work on that right now, get some songs together and make them, you know, even better than the demo. Yeah. Or the EP or whatever. So, and, that, and, and all that stuff came together kind of by accident, even though, you know, I didn't really half ass the songwriting, but I wasn't like, okay, well, you know, at the time I didn't know we were going to be on Maggot Stomp. So it wasn't like, oh, well, we're going to be on Maggot Stomp, so, you know, we need to make these as good as we possibly can. Right. It, it goes back to the to the genuine aspect of things. Like, yeah. that's what I love is music, so it just came out that way, you know, yeah. without even really trying. Yeah, and you can tell, and it, it's very raw, and it's just, it just slams, you know, it's good shit. And, uh, Right. It's kind of you know each song has a different vibe to it too. It's not like the same track three times. You know, there's a lot of they both they all differentiate from each other and have its own uh, you know kind of musical story to it. I think as as heavy as all right. it is, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I'm trying to. I'm trying to keep that same formula for the LP. I, I just want every song to have a different feel. I want every song to have its own individual offer on things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I. I don't want it to feel like oh, I don't want I don't want there to be one song that you skip on the record, you know. Yeah. I want it to all be just heavy shit, but it's all different, you know. Just LP full of, you know, the, the same shit we write, but I want it to kind of grow a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like I want all the songs to be different, but I don't want to be one of those bands that write the same thing over and over and over again. Right. You know? <clears throat> I always want to have that that same idea of what we started off as. Yeah. But you know. You know how people are, you know. Yeah. A band kind of they get lost a little in bit it. or tries new things, and people get bitchy about it. Oh, yeah. they change their sound, blah blah blah. <laughs> but I kind of that though because there's bands that go overboard with changing their sound. They'll like yeah. do some weird shit, and it's just like, yeah, no, I'm not into that shit anymore, dude. You like, lose your you lose your core fan base. I think that's the strongest thing you should keep, and a lot of people just yeah, want to yeah. go that extra step for the bigger audience, which is good in a lot of ways for you. But losing your core means you lose the band's essence. Really, I mean, the core is what you want to keep. No matter what, right, and that right, goes right. for any. That goes for horror movies too. Anything like that, any kind of passionate, um, like bass, you need to have that that core, you know, to follow with you. So I think best thing for you guys to do, you know, of course, keep that mindset you had, man. Just keep doing it the way you were doing it. There's no difference. There's nothing in the way of that. You guys just do exactly what you're doing because it's gotten you success. Literally, not even playing a show. Right. So <laughs> I think you got a good no, setup. No, yeah, I think. But I feel like I feel like it'll happen though, pretty naturally. It just it, it's just kind of different now because you know all of us, you know, we've all played in bands before, but we've never been on like a because like I said, Magus Tom's not like some huge like major label, but you know, a lot of people don't really understand that. You know, like I said, dude, they're a staple in underground, and and yeah. now and now kind of in my eyes, it doesn't really affect me, but in my eyes, the, you know, the pressure's kind of on now because it's like, right, you know, we have all this hype built up from three songs and you know we want to satisfy like you said the core fan base you yep. know the people that were there from the beginning and shit so but try not to let that shit really to me when writing you know yeah. I just kind of like you said you know do what we do and yeah. you know let it come out naturally because I feel like if it happened the first time that way and it went well then it'll happen that way again as long as yeah. you know like try you... way too hard or try hard to like satisfy certain people if we just exactly. you know, write what we like mm-hmm. which is exactly what the people like then shit I thought it would all go over pretty well. Which I think you guys are successful. Like, part of the reason of it is because you started this band with an old school metal mentality, which is, fuck it, I'm just going to write shit on my own for myself. And you did. Right. And people dug it. And that's what the real metal is all about. And people just get away from that so much. They try so hard. They try to be so heavy and try to do something 20,000 other bands have done. But what you did, you didn't. You just straight up was like, "I'm gonna do my own thing. I'm just gonna do it, and I'm gonna write it." And there it is, and it, it hit because of that. Because you had that old school mentality. It wasn't even old school to you. It was just you straight up being fed up with shit. You took that attitude and you wrote music out of it. That's what right. that's what metal's all about. And people kind of forget that. But that's why a lot of the great bands were who they were, or still are who they are, because that attitude is always in the back of their mind when they write and when they go out on stage and how they present themselves, you know, not being a fucking dickhead saying fuck you, but you know, like you're, (laughs) you had a a burning passion to just do something on your own and write your own music. And out of that came what you have now. So 
as long as you keep that, you know, and, and that that's part of you and it's in you because you've done it. So you can always replicate that out of your own, you know, self worth and your passion for music and uh, you know just your natural ability to make good shit and be heavy, you know. And I feel like I feel like a lot of bands do that too. Like, and, and you know how, how it goes for some bands. Like bands will be around for like shit. Like I guess a good example would be you know Code Orange or yeah power trip or mm-hmm. any of those bands you know they were around dude I, dude code orange because i'm from ashley Bula, which yeah. is like an hour east of cleveland yeah dude code orange used to play here when they were code orange kids yeah and i'm talking like dude there would be like 10 people in the room yeah and every time they'd come to ashley Bula and play it would be like that and, you know there'd be certain shows where they play and they'd be packed the fuck out but right dude seeing from where they went to where they are now and and on top of that they never really like at least in my opinion they never really like away from what they did you know no there's and, a little bit more took them a little bit longer of a time to get it accomplished but yeah you know i guess my point is is that there's a lot of bands that will be around for two or three four years or whatever and then their shit doesn't really pop off as quick yeah and then they'll be like okay what are we doing wrong okay and then they'll look at their music and they'll observe bands that are blowing up or got some sort of you know hype behind them and they'll be like oh well it's working for this band let's let's do it for our band but it's not genuine you know what i mean yeah and you can tell and, and fans can tell you know yeah, yeah, big time. And I feel like if you just, you know, if you, if your music's good and and you work hard enough, I feel like it really doesn't matter. Yeah. What type of metal you play, or even I guess what type of music you play, I feel like you know, you just got to keep working hard. And there'll, and there'll be kids out there that like that shit. And there will be a label, and you know, you you know, you'll eventually get there. But that's the thing that bands do. They they just reserve what's working for other people, and they'll try to rip that off, and it, and then it just feels so ungenuine. And then on top of that. You know, you go back to the earlier material, and it's completely different, and it's just like, you know, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and there's some bands I've, I've heard that, like, yeah, have done that same thing. They, they've, like, observed bands that blew up or whatever, have something working for them, and then they'll try to write that style of music. But then I go back to the older material, and I like that shit better. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's like, damn, dude, you should have just stuck with that and worked a little bit harder, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's all about putting the work in, for sure. and Or sometimes, not. I mean, you just... Like I said, you guys just kind of did your thing and put a demo out, and uh, you got eyes on you, and then it just kind of happened. So um, no, I'm happy for you guys. I really am. I think that's fucking rad, you know. Oh, yeah, man. I appreciate it. That's, well, that's kind of one of the things I told Scott, though, too, is like, you know, I, I let him know. I was like, hey, man, you know, we've never really been in a situation like this to where we're on, like, a label, yeah. you know, that has, first off, like almost every band uh, pretty much every band on his roster fucking rips and I'm like a huge yeah. fan of and then on top of that he actually has like a fan base that actually give a shit it's not yeah. just people commenting on Instagram like oh dude fuck yeah like that's sick <laughs> but then don't buy the no we're music buying or, shit like, you know, <laughs> in the music or whatever <laughs> so like I told him I'm like dude you know I, I, I just kind of let him know that we're not taking the whole uh, easy success even though I guess I don't know if you call it success, but I guess in a way it is. Oh, you know, definitely I, I success. Him, like I'm not going to take the easy success as like a like a like easy way out. Almost, you know. I, I told them that we're going to use this as you know just a chance to work harder and yeah, you know, we're we're not going to get lazy after the first release. You know, we're just going to oh, work yeah. even harder, and then as soon as we can tour, we're going to tour and oh, put yeah. out more music and you know just do everything we can. You know, just to you know get our shit up there and progress. Oh yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely come see you guys and and uh, and shred. It'll be fucking awesome. You know, look forward to that yeah, for sure. I think it's gonna be sick. Yeah, and it's crazy too because I don't even. Because have you ever played in any bands before or oh, played yeah. music or yeah. you're just kind of like a fan? Back in the day, I played a, quite a bit of shows. Oh yeah, so you, so you kind of know what it's like to to either have a demo or even practice together. Yeah, like back like in the you, when you play a show, it's way different. It's yeah. like a way different feeling. You get an actual vibe of what the band is actually supposed to be like. Or yeah, it's different than playing know. in like a storage unit or something like that. And you know, back yeah, yeah, because even the shit sounds heavy then. Yeah, playing with the full band because you know, like like I said, when I demoed that first song, Maggie Cassie, on my computer, I was like, okay, this shit's heavy. Yeah, and then we actually jammed together, and I'm like, okay, this is really fucking heavy. Yeah, and then I know when we actually play a show live where there's actually like a crowd. Rate, or people in front of us in general, it's going to be like eight times heavier. When you get you know? that adrenaline and you guys really start feeling it, then you're going to be hitting even yeah, harder. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's kind of the thing that sucks 
sucks the most about this is like <laughs> me as a musician is like that's the best part about doing music is like yeah, yeah. writing's fun and that's why I loved it shit, yeah. and, you know whatever but playing live is like that's top the, tier for me the best know? part I mean that's why I always played because I wanted to play shows and a lot of the bands I recorded good shit with we never even got off the ground with playing shows you know it's like situations right. you ran into where band members just kind of stop it you know quit interest or they want to do something different or they just kind of leave and in the middle of you coming up with some good getting good hype behind something and like you know back when i was really doing music a lot you know there was more like myspace shit and like you can record one song and people want to book you at shows and um you know then it went on to like youtube and soundcloud and all that kind of shit but uh you know i, I record stuff here and there but you know, there's always a hype for, like, playing. That's what I want to do. You know, that's the whole reason why, I, you know, definitely somebody that likes to be on stage and do that, too. It's a lot of fun. And to be able to command, command a crowd and uh, just kind of have fun with friends, too. And, you know, it, it's it's, yeah, dude, it's a good time. I feel kind of, like, I feel grateful for, you know, playing in bands for 20 years and, you know, making the connections and stuff. Because, honestly, I feel like, like you know, like, for example... If my other band and uh, Limp Splitter didn't always play together, then I wouldn't know Devin. Yeah. And then, you know, Devin wouldn't have shared that little snippet I put on Facebook, and then, in return, Scott would have never heard it. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, I, I could have sent the fucking demo to Scott, but, dude, and he probably gets so much that submitted a day that he probably would have just skipped right over it, you know what I mean? Probably. So, that, yeah, exactly. So, that's why I'm kind of like, grateful that, you know, even for, like, a lot of the, not, not lost time, but, like, just playing shows for so many years like even if they were shitty shows and just yeah. you know whatever whatever you know it, it, they have connections and shit because you never know where those connections could go you know well it's all experience so. too you know any experience is good experience whether you know you feel like it was wasted or not like you right. played all those shows so you're, it's not like you're going out it's not like you've never played a show before so when you do go out there you're going to be ready you're going to kind of know what to expect not at this capacity it's still going to blow your mind you know, when, right. when there is big turnouts for for your band and stuff like that, you get booked at bigger venues. And um, when it all happens pretty quick, it's going to happen quick. But right. you know, it, you have that experience behind you where you've been on stage for a long time and you you know how to you know perform and and uh, you're prepared at least in that aspect. That you know, it's not something new to you as far as performing or your your passion for performing. So that's a good thing to right. have. <clears throat> Yeah, and I feel like it, I feel like that, you know, like you said, just having that experience, I feel like that definitely helped us with, you know, working with Scott and, you know, kind of having, like I said, that pressure on our heads now. Because I feel like if we didn't play shows for so long or work with any of those, like, shittier labels that yeah. just, just kind of, like, put a CD out or whatever but don't promote or don't even have a fan base or whatever, and I guess that doesn't really qualify and that's shitty, but, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that all kind of worked out to our advantage in this situation because now... You know, we know what to do. We know what not to do. You know, we know what we like. We know what people like. Yeah. We know what, you know, image we want to have, all that stuff. I feel like it all worked out for us, for this oh, situation yeah. in particular. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, I, you know, I love it, dude, and that that you guys have the success you have. You guys are great. And um, looking forward to all this blowover. So, and come catch you guys on tour, and uh, everyone's going to buy up your shit. That's another cool thing, too. It's like, I have to. I want to go to shows just to like buy the merch because I know that it's going to be gone. Like if I don't, right. <laughs> it's like uh, you know, Sango Sugar Box stuff. I bought. Uh, they're like, oh, we're gonna have the yellow long sleeve on tour, and I was like, but they put it up on the website, and I was like, I'm gonna go ahead and buy it because I know it's not gonna be there when I get there. And sure enough, they're like, oh yeah, we're out of all that shit. And I was like, well, I'm glad I bought it online because it's gone now because I really wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. uh, I'm usually trying to buy shit ahead of time now. It's like kind of crazy how that's working because you know, like it's average for metal bands to, like sell out of stuff on tour, like you know. But it's usually not like that. Like to where if you get there, there's like nothing. But it's also right. small, and especially you know. and especially for a band that's like you know because they're big, but you know they're not fucking monumental size yet. So for like an underground band to be selling out merch like that, and on top of that to be selling those off of 11 minutes of music is just yeah. dude it's fucking crazy to me yeah and you guys same thing you know three songs and, and never play a show and you guys are <laughs> selling out of shit 8 minutes of music <laughs> 8 minutes <laughs> and it'll sell out tomorrow you know I'm gonna try to get some tomorrow myself um, and you know while I can cause I didn't the first time I'm like alright well you got some new shit so we're gonna do it um, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see how this is all gonna work out you know with the second press and just 
you know, everything in general, even when we go to do the album, you know, I'm kind of interested to see how it's all going to work. Because, you know, you know how that happens for bands sometimes, you know. Yeah. They'll come out as a new band, you know, and they'll be hyped, whatever, whatever, and then it'll just kind of die down, and the yeah. second thing won't do as good. So, you know, I'm just kind of interested to see if that's going to work out for us in the long run, or, you know, or if it's just like another hype death metal band or whatever, you know. Well, from what I've been seeing, and it's been like stretched out the last couple of years, I think it's just getting bigger honestly like it's 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 come back in the right time and i think for bands like you guys that are actually you know putting out really good shit um and and coming off a debut like is is insane so that's always a good sign when you're like pretty popular just coming out of the gate because you know a lot of bands it takes a while to really notice um yeah so i think people are looking more for bands like 200 stab wounds and, and, and bands on Stomp and profound lore all that stuff so it's more in the underground top because, like I said, there hasn't really been like the greatest of that in recent time. Like it's all kind of like a lot of it for a while became like tech death shit, and a lot of it was yeah, kind of yeah. branched off into like you know I think bands like Power Trip and stuff like that kind of brought it back down a little bit because they got really popular and they have like that obituary vibe to them. And um, right. I think that kind of you know because they blew up, I think people were like, all right, we like bands like that. You know, this tech death stuff. It's cool, but it's kind of like it, it. It stretched out too long, I think. And then yeah. when this stuff started coming around, you know, I, I noticed people were getting more into like the slam shit, which a lot of that's kind of, you know, hit or miss with that stuff now because it's been going on so long. It's like all these slam bands from everywhere. Um, now with this stuff, I think it's just gotten to the point where it needs to go, where it's just taken off even quicker because. We've had so much of a buildup of all this other stuff, and I think it's finally back to a level where people really want to hear the music you guys are making and like these other bands are doing. It's just at a good place right now where it's right. gonna be gonna be huge, you know. I think soon. That's what I think is so cool about uh, uh, inoculation being on Magasound because yeah, you know, they're great. Man. I, I kind of feel like the the signature Magasound sound is like just insanely heavy. But also ripping at the same time, and yeah. you know. But I, and I don't know if you agree with me on this, but I feel like the, like the opinion I've always had on inoculation is that they're kind of tech death, you know. Yeah, and I never bit. really got that deep into it, so, yeah. uh, like that genre. So I don't really know for sure. But when I listen to them, that's the vibe I guess. So I think that's what's coolest about them being on Magastomp and you know Scott yeah. even having them on that label is because you know they they don't really have that signature Magastomp sound. So yeah. I think that kind of opens up the doors to other. You know, oh, genres yeah. of, you know. Yeah, they're they're incredible musicians, and you know they got uh, they're just very progressive as far as like the the kind of like how heavy they are. They're very progressive too, and they got a really good thrash element to them, and uh, they're really yeah. good, they're really good blend of music. And I think that's what makes them pretty popular too. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think they were one of the first like Magastomp bands. I'm not for sure, but I'm pretty sure they were one of the earlier. Yeah, they signs. were one of the first. To my knowledge, they were one of the first. Cause pretty sure Magastomp's only been around for like a year or so and yeah I remember about a year ago they you know they got signed so yeah yeah those guys are great too and I would love to see them and you know uh, those guys are always been super cool so hopefully it was crazy too because I've always like our, my other band play, used to play a lot of shows with them like nice. we used to play in Columbus with them a lot and Cincinnati and we were supposed to do a show on our tour that got cancelled nice. we were supposed to do a show with them in Texas yep but Dude, for a long time, I didn't even know they were on Magistomp. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, you know, we've always been pretty good friends with them, and then once I started getting more into, like, the Magistomp bands, because honestly, the only reason why I got, like, heavily into Magistomp and, like, got introduced to them is because of Sangua Superbug. Yeah. Like, they put out their, uh, they put out their EP, and I kind of slept on it for a minute, you know, because, like I mentioned earlier in the conversation, I'm, I'm one of those people that, like, if someone tells me to check something out <laughs> yeah. or whatever, You're I'm like, just nah. not going to do it. <laughs> so, like, when I finally did listen to it, I'm like, oh, shit, like, yeah. this is fucking nasty. Then I, you know, saw they were on Magastomp and how well they were doing, and then I started digging deeper and found out about Disembowel, Malignant yeah. Alter. Dude, that Disembowel falling is crazy. Yeah, they're but, nasty. And, uh, but, yeah, dude, I... I don't know, I just think it's pretty crazy that all that shit, even for Magasomp, just in general, took off as quick as it did, you know? Oh, yeah. I know labels that have been around for years and years and years, and, you know, they try their hardest, which is a good thing, but it just doesn't have the same results, so I think right. it's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I think the first band I heard of Magasomp was Fluids, I had a buddy of mine show me <laughs> them. It was a great 
great too. And I have I have their cassette, and I was like, dude, this is like better mortician, which I didn't think was possible. Yeah. <laughs> they just sound fucking sick, and they I like the first all the song I heard by them was that uh fuck what's it called Hold? Yeah, think. yeah. Dude, that shit's insane. Yeah, they got like all that cartel shit and in, in, like the samples, and like God, this is fucking brutal. And the you know, yeah, they were so fucking good. And then I think I heard Sango Sugabog and. My friend that showed it to me, you know, I think he's familiar with the bands and some of the bands, but didn't know the label. And then I heard Sango Sugabog from there, and I was like, "Dude, you gotta check this band out." And then they're like, "Oh shit, this fucking rips." And I was like, "Yeah, this is the same label." And then I was like, "Oh shit, every band in this label is fucking awesome," you know. Yeah. And that's when I heard like Church of Disgust and like Gutted, and I was like, "God, this is fucking ridiculous." And Ossuary, and you know, all that stuff was just ridiculous. So, um, yeah, huge fan of it. Glad you guys are on there. When I saw that, I was like. I better go check them out, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this, right. is, this is good." So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I'm like. You know, very grateful for you know Scott wanting to work with us because I feel like because my plan was to just you know when I started making the songs, my plan was to just you know put it out, yeah, you know, just independently, just kind of you know, throw it on Bandcamp. Hey, check it out, you know, new band, yeah. whatever. And I know for a fact it wouldn't have went as crazy as it did, even though it's the same music, you know, right. So that's why I'm kind of. You know, I'm really grateful for Scott wanting to work with us because, you know, just the small success we've had so far, you know. Hell yeah. Well, yeah, I'd, I'd be grateful too, and I'm definitely, like I said, congrats to you guys and happy for you, and hopefully this blows over sooner than later so we can you know, get you the fuck out there and get the fans out there and we can, you know, have a good time, you know. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm sure it will. I yeah. think we already have something in the works right now for... It hasn't been confirmed yet, and we haven't really talked about it too much, but I think that we might be playing a show in Boston in October, but I'm not really 100% sure nice. yet. So hopefully that will go. Oh, and, you know, I also see a lot on the internet about bands already starting to book shows for later this year, like yeah. on some certain festivals, and just like little smaller shows and stuff like that. So that gives me a pretty good, you know, hunch that stuff's yeah. going to be happening here soon. Yeah, they're saying hopefully by the fall, you know, I don't think anything this summer is going to happen, which is unfortunate. Um, yeah. That nobody's gonna have a summer this year because I was really, you know, pretty hyped on having a summer. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. But it'll it'll make everything next year a lot a lot nicer. We, and I think yeah, hopefully people gonna, don't take advantage of shows anymore. You know. Yeah, <laughs> I think you know. I think it'll be a lot crazier. People are just raring to get out and go to shows again. It's gonna be a lot bigger than people are anticipating. You know, especially the younger people um, are definitely gonna be more inclined to go out to any fucking show it's like let's go see 200 right. stab wounds you're like oh yeah fuck it let's go i don't even know who they are it's like well let's go right. <laughs> i'm taking you so we'll right. you know it'll be a lot of fun i think and hopefully sooner than later like i said but yeah dude i i really appreciate your time and then uh doing this with me and like i said all the success happy for you and just keep uh keep fucking grinding out shit and just having a good time with it oh yeah man i appreciate it dude 